And now we present the 11th in our series of complete performances of the operas of Gilbert and Sullivan. Performances of the operas of Gilbert and Sullivan. Today's opera is The Gondoliers, or The King of Barataria.
the gondoliers. Venice, its canals, its churches, pavilions and palaces, and above all its vital, colourful and melodious inhabitants. It is in Venice that we find ourselves, not today, nor yet in Gilbert's own time, but in the year 1750. Here, in the Piazzetta, in front of the Ducal Palace, we first meet not the gondoliers themselves, but their lady friends. These contadine are preparing floral tributes for the gondoliers Marco and Giuseppe, who are the most highly favoured among their colleagues. <laughs> Contradicente! 
loving and laughing and tripping and puffing, we're happy as happy can be. <laughs> With loving and laughing and tripping and puffing, we're happy as happy can be. <laughs> Gondolieri, gondolieri, ta-da-da-da-da, tra-da-da-da-da-da. 
off they go to be married, Gianetta to Marco, Tessa to Giuseppe. But now we see a gondola arriving at the steps of the piazzetta. In it is a group of four people dressed in pompous but old and faded clothes. and it is here that the Grand Inquisitor resides. As a Castilian Hidalgo of 95 quarterings, I regret that I am unable to pay my state visit on a horse. As a Castilian Hidalgo of that description, I should have preferred to ride through the streets of Venice, but owing, I presume, to an unusually wet season. The streets are in such a condition that equestrian exercise is impracticable. No matter. Where is our suite? Your Grace, I am here. Why do you not do yourself the honour to kneel when you address His Grace? My love, it is so small a matter. Still, you may as well do it. The young man seems to entertain but an imperfect appreciation of the respect due from a menial to a Castilian Hidalgo. My child, you are hard upon our sweet. Papa, I have no patience with the presumption of persons in his plebeian position. If he does not appreciate that position, let him be whipped until he does. Well, let us hope the omission was not intended as a slight. I should be much hurt if I thought it was. So would he. Where are the halberdiers who would have had the honour of meeting us here, that our visit to the Grand Inquisitor might be made in becoming state? Your Grace, the halberdiers are mercenary people who stipulated for a trifle on account. Oh, tiresome. Well, let us hope the Grand Inquisitor is a blind gentleman. And the band, the band would have had the honour of escorting us. I see no band. Your Grace, the band are sordid persons who required to be paid in advance. That's so like a band. Insuperable difficulties meet me at every turn. But surely they know his Grace. Exactly. They know his Grace. Oh, well, let us hope the Grand Inquisitor is a deaf gentleman. A cornita piston would be something. Uh, you do not happen to possess the accomplishment of tootling like a cornita piston? Alas, no, Your Grace. But I can imitate a farmyard. Mm, I don't see how that would help us. I don't see how we could bring it in. It would not help us in the least. We are not a parcel of graziers come to market, don't. My love, our sweet feelings. Be so good as to ring the bell and inform the Grand Inquisitor that his grace, the Duke of Plazatoro, Count of Matadoro, Baron Picadoro... And sweet. And sweet. Have arrived at Venice and beg... Desire. And demand. And demand an audience. Your grace has but to command. I felt sure of it. I felt sure of it. And now, my love, shall we tell her? 
And now, my love, prepare for a magnificent surprise. It is my agreeable duty to reveal to you a secret which would make you the happiest young lady in Venice. A secret? A secret which, for state reasons, it has been necessary to preserve for 20 years. When you were a prattling babe of six months old, you were married by proxy to no less a personage than the infant son and heir of His Majesty, the immeasurably wealthy King of Barataria. Married to the infant son of the King of Barataria? Was I consulted? <clears throat> then it was a most unpardonable liberty. Consider his extreme youth and forgive him. Shortly after the ceremony, that misguided monarch abandoned the creed of his forefathers and became a Wesleyan Methodist of the most bigoted and persecuting type. The Grand Inquisitor determined that the innovation should not be perpetuated in Barataria, caused your smiling and unconscious husband to be stolen and conveyed to Venice. A fortnight since, that Methodist monarch and all his Wesleyan court were killed in an insurrection. And we are here to ascertain the whereabouts of your husband and to hail you, our daughter, as Her Majesty the reigning Queen of Barataria. Your Majesty. It is at such moments as these that one feels how necessary it is to travel with a full band. I, the Queen of Barataria? But I've nothing to wear. We are practically penniless. Oh, that find has not escaped me, although I am unhappily in straitened circumstances at present. My social influence is something enormous, and a company to be called the Duke of Plaza Toro Limited is in course of formation to work me. An influential directorate has been secured, and I shall myself join the board after allotment. Am I to understand that the Queen of Barataria may be called upon at any time to witness her honoured sire in process of liquidation? The speculation is not exempt from that drawback. If your father should stop, it will, of course, be necessary to wind him up. But it's so undignified. It's so degrading. A grandee of Spain turned into a public company. Such a thing was never heard of. My child, the Duke of Plaza Toro does not follow fashions. He leads them. He always leads everybody. When he was in the army, he led his regiment. He occasionally led them into action. He invariably led them out of it. In enterprise of martial kind, when there was any fighting, he let his regiment from behind, he found it less exciting. But when away his regiment ran, his face was at the foro. That celebrated, cultivated, underrated nobleman, the Duke of Plaza Toro. In the first and foremost fight, ha! Who is gone that night, ha! That celebrated, cultivated, underrated nobleman, the Duke of Plaza Toro. And to evade destruction's hand, to hide, they all proceeded. No soldier in that gallant band hid half as well as he did. He lay concealed throughout the war, and so preserved his Doro. That unevicted, undetected, war connected warrior, the Duke of Plaza Toro. He never did, ah, he always took the lead, ah. That unevicted, undetected, war connected warrior, the Duke of Plaza Toro. When told that they would all be shot unless they left the service, that hero hesitated not so marvelous his nervous. He sent his resignation in the first of all his coro, that very knowing overflowing is he going padded in the Duke of Plaza Toro. To men of girls a clay, ha, he always showed the way, ha, that very knowing overflowing is he going padded in the Duke of Plaza Toro, that very knowing overflowing is he going padded in the Duke of Plaza Toro.
Lewis, Lewis, what have you said? What have I done? What have I allowed you to do? Nothing, I trust, that you will ever have reason to repent. Nay, Lewis, it may not be. I have embraced you for the last time. Casilda. I have just learnt to my surprise and indignation that I was wed in babyhood to the infant son of the King of Barataria. The son of the King of Barataria? The child who was stolen in infancy by the Inquisition? The same. But of course you know his story. I know his story. Why, I've often told you that my mother was the nurse to whose charge he was entrusted. True, I had forgotten. Well, he has been discovered, and my father has brought me here to claim his hand. But you will not recognize this marriage. It took place when you were too young to understand his import. Nay, Louis, respect my principles and cease to torture me with vain entreaties. Henceforth, my life is another's. But stay. The present and the future, they are another's. But the past, that at least is ours, and none can take it from us. As we may revel in naught else... Let us revel in that. I don't think I grasp your meaning. Yet it is logical enough. You say you cease to love me. I say I may not love you. Ah, but you do not say you did not love me. I loved you with a frenzy that words are powerless to express. And that but ten brief minutes since... Exactly. My own, that is until ten minutes since, my own, my lately loved, my recently adored... Tell me that until, say, a quarter of an hour ago, I was all in all to thee. I see your idea. It's ingenious. But don't do that. Uh, there, there can be no harm in reveling in the past. None whatever. Uh, but an embrace cannot be taken to act retrospectively. Uh, perhaps not. We may recollect an embrace. I recollect many. Uh, but we must not repeat them. Then... Let us recollect a few. Ah, Casilda, you were to me as the sun is to the earth. A quarter of an hour ago. About that. And to think that, but for this miserable discovery, you would have been my own for life. Through life to death, a quarter of an hour ago. How greedily my thirsty ears would have drunk the golden melody of those sweet words, a quarter... Well, it is now about twenty minutes since. About that. In such a matter, one cannot be too precise. And now our love, so full of life, is but a silent, solemn memory. Must it be so, Casilda? Louis, it must be so. <laughs> a time, a time forever gone, oh, oh, with me. It was no crime to love but thee alone, oh, oh, with me. One heart, one life, one soul, one age.
allow me to present you his distinction, Don Alhambra Bolero, the Grand Inquisitor of Spain. It was his distinction who so thoughtfully abstracted your infant husband and brought him to Venice. So this is the little lady who is so unexpectedly called upon to assume the functions of royalty. And a very nice little lady, too. <laughs> Jimp, isn't she? <laughs> Distinctly, Jimp. Allow me. Naughty temper. You must make some allowance. Her Majesty's head is a little turned by her excess of dignity. I could have wished that Her Majesty's excess of dignity had turned it in this direction. Unfortunately, if I am not mistaken, there appears to be some little doubt as to his Majesty's whereabouts. A doubt as to his whereabouts? Louis, then we may yet be saved. A doubt? Oh, dear, no. No doubt at all. He is here in Venice, plying the modest but picturesque calling of a gondolier. Oh. I can give you his address. I see him every day. In the entire annals of our history, there is absolutely no circumstance so entirely free from all manner of doubt of any kind whatever. Listen, and I'll tell you all about it. The prince and I brought him here and left him gaily prattling with a highly respectable gondolier who promised the royal babe to rear and teach him the trade of a time only with his own beloved prattling. Both of the babes were strong and stout and considering all things clever. Of that there is no manner of doubt, no probable possible shadow of doubt, no possible doubt whatever. No possible doubt whatever. But owing I'm much disposed to fear to his terrible taste for tippling, that highly respectable gondolier could never declare with a mind sincere which of the two was his offspring dear and which the royal stripling. Which was which he could never make out despite his best endeavor. Of that there is no manner of doubt. Probable possible shadow of doubt, no possible doubt whatever. No possible doubt whatever. Time sped, and when at the end of a year I sought that infant cherished, that highly respectable gondolier was lying a corpse on his humble bier. I dropped a grand inquisitor's tear, that gondolier had perished. A taste for drink combined with gout had doubled him up forever. Of that there is no manner of doubt, no probable possible shadow of doubt, no possible doubt whatever. No possible doubt whatever. The children followed his old career, this statement can't be parried. Of a highly respectable gondolier, well, one of the two will soon be here. But which of the two it is not quite clear is the royal prince you married. Search in and out and round about and you'll discover never a tale so free from every doubt, all probable possible shadow of doubt, all possible doubt whatever. A tale so free from every doubt, all probable possible shadow of doubt, all possible doubt whatever. mean to say that I am married to one of two gondoliers, but it is impossible to say which? Without any doubt of any kind whatever. But be reassured. The nurse to whom your husband was entrusted is the mother of the musical young man who is such a past master of that delicately modulated instrument, the drum. She can no doubt establish the king's identity beyond all question. Heavens, how did he know that? My young friend, a Grand Inquisitor is always up to date. His mother is at present the wife of a highly respectable and old established brigand who carries on an extensive practice in the mountains around Cordova. Accompanied by two of my emissaries, he will set off at once for his mother's address. She will return with them, and if she finds any difficulty in making up her mind, the persuasive influence of the torture chamber will jog her memory. But bless my heart, consider my position. I am the wife of a wolf. That's very clear. But who can tell except my intuition? is the prince and which the gondolier. 
fate without unseemly wrangle. Such complications frequently occur. Life is one closely complicated tangle. Earth is the only true one rebel. Try we life long, we can never straighten out life's tangle stain. Why should we inflame and devil guess and guess and guess again? Life's a pudding full of thorns. Kids and tanker that he knows. Life's a pudding.
going to begin in real earnest. What's a bachelor? A mere nothing. He's a chrysalis. He can't be said to live. He exists. What a delightful institution marriage is. Why have we wasted all this time? Why didn't we marry ten years ago? <laughs> because you couldn't find anybody nice enough. Because you were waiting for us. I suppose that was the reason. We were waiting for you without knowing it. Good morning. Hello. If this gentleman's an undertaker, it's a bad omen. Ceremony of some sort going on? He is an undertaker. Uh, no, a little unimportant family gathering. Nothing in your line. Somebody's birthday, I suppose. Yes, mine. And mine. And mine. And mine. Curious coincidence. And how old may you all be? It's a rude question, but about ten minutes. Remarkably fine children. <laughs> but surely you are jesting. In other words, we were married ten minutes since. Married? You don't mean to say you are married? Oh, yes, we are married. What? Both of you? All, All four of us. us. Bless my heart, how extremely awkward. You don't mind, I suppose. You are not thinking of either of us for yourself, I presume. Oh, Giuseppe, look at him. He was. He's heartbroken. No, no, I wasn't. I wasn't. Now, my man... We don't want anything in your line today, and if your curiosity is satisfied, you can go. You mustn't call me your man. It's a liberty. I don't think you know who I am. Not we, indeed. We are jolly gondoliers, the sons of Battista Palmieri, who led the last revolution. Republicans, heart and soul, we hold all men to be equal. As we abhor oppression, we abhor kings. As we detest vainglory, we detest rank. As we despise effeminacy, we despise wealth. We are Venetian gondoliers, your equals in everything except our calling, and in that, at once your masters and your servants. Bravo! Oh, bless my heart, how unfortunate. One of you may be Battisto's son for anything that I know to the contrary, but the other is no less a personage than the only son of the late king of Barataria. A king? What? And I trust, I trust, it was that one who slapped me on the shoulder and called me his man. Not what is it? it? But which is it? What does it matter? As you are both Republicans and hold kings in detestation, of course you'll abdicate at once. Good morning. Oh, oh don't, don't do that. that. Well, as to that, of course there are kings and kings. When I say that I detest kings, I mean I detest... Bad king. I see. It's a delicate distinction. Uh, quite so. Now, I can conceive a kind of king, an ideal king, the creature of my fancy, you know, who would be absolutely unobjectionable. A king, for instance, who would abolish taxes and make everything cheap, oh. except gondolas. And give a great many free entertainments to the gondoliers. And let off fireworks on the Grand Canal and engage all the gondolas for the occasion. And scramble money on the Rialto among the gondoliers. Such a king would be a blessing to his people. And if I were a king, that is the sort of king I would be. Come, I'm glad to find your objections are not insuperable. Oh, oh they're, they're not, not insuperable. insuperable. No, no, they're, they're not, not insuperable. Besides, we're open to conviction. Yes, they are open to conviction. Oh, they've often been convicted. <gasps> Our views may have been hastily formed on insufficient grounds. They may be crude, ill-digested, erroneous. I have a very poor opinion of the politician who's not open to conviction. Oh, he's a fine fellow. Yes, that's the sort of politician for my money. Then we'll consider it settled. Ah. Uh, now, as the country is in a state of insurrection, it is absolutely necessary that you should assume the reins of government at once. And until it is ascertained which of you is to be king, I have arranged that you will reign jointly. 
so that no question can arise hereafter as to the validity of any of your acts. As one individual. As one individual. Like, like this. <laughs> Something like that. And we may take our friends with us and give them places about the court. Undoubtedly. That's always done. I'm convinced. So am I. Then the sooner we're off, the better. We'll just run home and pack up a few things. Stop, stop. That won't do at all. Ladies are not admitted. What? Not admitted, not at present. Afterwards, perhaps. We'll see. Why, you don't mean to say you're going to separate us from our wives? Uh, this is very awkward. Uh, only for a time. A few months. After all, what is a few months? But we've only been married half an hour. uncalled for grief. Your separation will be very brief. To ascertain which is the king and which the other, to Barataria's court I'll bring his foster mother. Her former nursling to declare she'll be delighted. That settled, let each happy pair be reunited. Viva! This argument is strong. Viva! We'll not be parted long. Viva! It will be settled soon. Viva! Then comes our honeymoon. Viva! 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 Oh, 
crown awaits me. Conflicting feelings rend my soul apart. The thought of royal dignity elates me. But leaving thee behind me breaks my heart. Farewell, my love. On board you must be getting. But while upon the sea you gaily roam, remember that a heart is fretting. A tender little heart you left at home. No my wish is here while you're Understood you will be good and not too gay. To every trace of maiden grace you will be blind and will not gloat by any chance on womankind. If you are wise, you shut your eyes till we arrive and not address a lady less than forty-five. You'll please to frown on every gown that you may see.
And so the gondoliers leave Venice and sail southwards to the island of Barataria. <laughs> 